been tough. It's, it's, uh, it's um, you know, gut-wrenching. I think most of all watching our, our players hurt, uh, watching our coaches hurt, our staff, everybody who pours so much into this, our families. Uh, you know, people forget the sacrifice that families make in an effort to to go compete at the highest level. And uh, it's exactly what we had an opportunity to do. It's exactly the stage that we put ourselves on. Couldn't be more proud of our organization, uh, of our players, of our coaches, um, of our staff, because we, we put out an outstanding effort. And ultimately, we, we're going to have to live with, for a lifetime, the, the reality that we didn't get it done this time. But I say this time because that's this time, and uh, it, it hurts. And right now, you, everyone's grieving. It's not just going to be OK right away. But um, you know, you understand that the only thing you can do is uh, use this fuel uh, to uh, propel us forward. And that's, that's where our mindsets are at, or, or at least where they will arrive at some point. Right now, there's a lot of people who's, who are hurt because uh, we poured it out there and it, didn't, it wasn't quite enough. Uh, is there a part of this game or the decision making or anything that you kind of look back on more than anything else and, and second guess yourself for? Uh, I mean, like I've told you guys before, anytime you lose, every decision you made, I mean, you make a decision every play throughout that game. So uh, when you lose, you'll go over that stuff um, always um, throughout the entire offseason, through cutups, through everything. But, um, you know, there was nothing that I thought in the moment that I did wrong. It was everything. I was proud of that and um, like the thought process behind everything. What, what are your thoughts on the, the defense this season and how Steve Wilkes did as coordinator? Uh, you know, I thought they're one of the reasons that we got this far. I thought they did a number of good things. Uh, they did a lot of good things in that game, too, um, just like our whole team. Um, our team did a bunch of good things this year, but um, came up short in the last game. How in about of Drake Greenlaw getting hurt, how that played into the defense later in the game? Um, I can't tell you exactly, um, but I mean, when you lose one of your better players, it, I mean, it definitely doesn't help. So um, not having Dre out there was, was definitely huge, but they missed some guys, too. Yeah, I think Oren was fantastic. I'll, I'll say yeah, that. Oren no stepped up in a big way, as did uh, Flan, Demetrius Flanagan Foles, and I thought they they uh, they were tremendous. But when you got a guy like Drake Greenlaw, he's an impact player. So is, does it have an effect on the game? Of course it does. Uh, on Steve Wilkes, have you guys spoken well, you know, to his stage and the stage in his career and where you want the team to go? Is there any reason to think he won't be back next season? No, that's stuff that, I mean, we'll talk about a ton as this week goes. We'll talk about a ton in the offseason. I mean, where we want our team to be, our defense, our offense, special teams, and that's, that's a lot of conversations, a lot of film, a lot of fra um, personnel or salary cap um, things we got to discuss, drafts. So, no, we're just having not watched the game yet, to tell you the truth. Kyle, John, a few of the players that we talked to expressed that of all the deep postseason runs, not ending the way you wanted them to, this one hurts them the most. Would you say you guys feel the same way? And if so, can you kind of pinpoint why that is? Because we lost the Super Bowl in overtime. You know, that's the one would be tied with it is losing another Super Bowl. And behind that, you'd put NFC championships. But I mean, everyone's goal is to win the Super Bowl. And it's great when you win playoff games. It's great when you win a championship and you get there. But getting the Super Bowl, going through that, you know, with your teammates and your families and just the whole process of it, it's always I don't know how many people know about it, but it's, it's it's not fun to go and lose. I think the other part of that, it's fresh. Um, and, you know, we went to great lengths in 19. We had this opportunity and, and uh, fell short. And, you know, you respond to that in such a way, okay, how do we make our team such that we can, when we get here again, this is ours. And so you, you put all those things in. And that's primarily... Um, is it the talent of our guys? Absolutely, but it's it's the spirit, and and we had a bunch of high character guys that that were made for this moment, and so to come up short, that's that's difficult. And I think you you got to hats off to the Chiefs, to Andy, uh, to the organization, and they got a pretty special guy, you know, at quarterback, and he's tough to beat, and uh, you know we've 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 got to live with that for a lifetime. But I think knowing how good this team was, our team. And to have those chances and, and not to come up, that, that makes it very difficult. John, what kind of plan is there for Brandon Ayuk this offseason? And is extending him a, a top priority for you? Yeah, you have to prioritize all these things. You know, Brandon's entering his fifth year option. Uh, Brandon's been a fantastic player for us. Uh, you know, Kyle calls him a warrior all the time because of the way he goes out and competes. And I, 
I mean, that shines through any anybody who, whether you're a trained eye or whether you're a fan, you can see the passion he plays with. You can see the production that he's had. Uh, we're extremely, uh, you know, um, prideful in what he's become, and, and he should be as well. And so, you know, your team is comprised of guys, you know, veterans who've been paid very well, of guys who want to play, be played very well. We got one guy on our team who, you know, is pretty prominent who can't be played very, you know, real well right now because the, the CBA doesn't allow. So it's all one big puzzle. <coughs> Uh, we've developed a good cadence over the years, Kyle and I, where he focuses on the season. We we do all the planning, and then we present things to him, and we work through it. And that's what we'll continue continue to do. But of course, we, you want a guy like Brandon Ayuk to be a part of you going forward. The team's going to change over the course of the next few coming year. What are you going to miss about this particular group of guys? And is there a way to I don't want to say replicate it, but can you get that back for the next? Uh, I mean, you always got to do it again, start it over. But um, I'm at the, and we had a real good team. I felt, you know, similar almost every year. Uh, 19 was a pretty special year, just how we played throughout that whole year. Um, and similar in the way that, you know, I thought, I thought one of the hardest things after the game is just watching how much everyone hurt for each other. I mean, guys are hurt for me, I hurt for them. Um, you start, you see your families, you see how much they hurt for you and stuff. And I think that's what was real special about this group. Like, we we had a, so many guys who were playing um, for stuff above themselves, and uh, not to mention how how talented our guys were. And so I think that's what I'm going to miss the most about it. Um, I think that's what our, our guys enjoyed the most about this year. I, I think they would echo that same thing. That's not something you can just make up, but that that was pretty special. And I think you've heard our guys talk about it a little bit. Um, but I also know a lot of those special guys uh, are going to be here next year. Uh, you don't just pick up right where you left off. You got to go through some stuff. You got to go through an off season together. We got to grieve this a little bit and then come back stronger from it. But um, can't wait till we get to what I told all the guys. I know I'm going to see everyone in volunteer phase one, just pumped up, ready to go. So we'll see him then. Kyle, I know you said you haven't watched the film, but to go back to the, the third uh, five of the inter regulation, the third and four, I think it was an overtime. Yeah. What went wrong with, with the protections there, if anything? Uh, yeah, there's some confusion. They brought a blitz, some um, mistakes inside, just um, not getting the right guy to the right spot and brought a hole up the middle. Apologies if you already answered this. I couldn't quite hear Matt's question, but is Steve Wilkes coming back next year? Uh, I haven't talked to anybody yet, so yeah, I expect all our coaches to be back. You called timeout, second and six, like two and a half minutes left in uh, overtime. What, where did you, what, did you see something you didn't like? Uh, yeah, I didn't like the look they were in, and uh, one of our players looked um, a little gassed and didn't think I was going to use them all right there, so I thought that would be a good time to use one. Is, is it a challenging thing for a coach to get guys to pick themselves back up after something like this and, you know, do the things you're talking about? Is that is that a different type of challenge? Um, I mean, it would definitely would be if we had to do it right now. Um, and that's why guys need to get away. They, I mean, this is real. You do have to grieve this. It's, um, but I mean, I our guys one, they have jobs to do just like we do, and two, I think our guys really are passionate about their jobs and enjoy football a lot. So I think our guys are going to be hungry as ever coming back from this, just like they were as hungry as I've ever seen a group of guys coming to last off season after how our off season in Philly finished the year before. So um, when you when you got guys who really love what they do and that's that's what brings that passion and you just got to put together a group of guys that are also good at it well, you said you hadn't looked at the, at the game yet what when will you do that um usually when i'm ready to or when i have to I'm, um i don't think i have to anytime soon so but it, i'm not really ready to right now uh i mean we got home last night um you know so i just hung out and watched griselda blanco with my family it's pretty cool um just want it's hard because I don't feel like usually I watch sports or read some on my phone and I don't really feel like doing any of that right now. So I got to catch up on some movies last night with my family and then came in today and just really talked with players and stuff and just got to say bye to a couple guys, which I'd love to say bye to everyone, but I can't talk to 60 people before this press conference. So we'll see if there's any people lingering here till probably seven at night. Um, but that, that's really what we do these two days. And I'm sure I'll come in here. It'll be a little bit quieter over the next couple of days and I'm sure I'll turn it on pretty soon. Your view, your view of the defense, I mean, the roster is fluid during the season, but parts come and go. Um, <clears throat> did it seem like they, it was, they struggled getting that cohesion by 
you had to get replacement defensive ends. You had uh, safeties coming in and out without Huff and the nickelback role, obviously, too. It, I guess is fortifying that defense before you come back for offseason program a, kind of a main priority? Yeah, I mean, I like I think a lot of the, the, the pieces have and, you know, we're there and, and you're always dealing with injuries. So, you know, I, I think, um, you know, the, I think the thing that I have an immense amount of pride, you look at this defense, Eric Armstead, I think you guys learned today that he battled through a torn meniscus, made a decision to play because he knew the opportunity. Uh, Javon Hargrave had a similar decision with a torn thumb ligament and decided we had too rare of an opportunity. And once our guys would allow him and our medical experts and oftentimes second opinions would allow these guys to play, I mean, those things happen. And that's the thing that people don't see at home, the sacrifice people are making. I uh, was really proud of our defense, the way they competed in this last game. I, I think that, that looked like I envisioned it looking. We are getting after them. And, uh, our guys, uh, Logan Ryan, you know, Kyle jokes, but it's true. We, you know, we started talking to him. He was on a Disney cruise with his family. He said, give me 10 days. And he played an integral part in us getting to that final game. And so there's so many of those guys. I think we have a really good nucleus um, yeah, that we can and will keep together. And uh, yeah, of course, we're always, you know, I had old coach that Kyle worked for that I played for John Gruden used to say all the time you, you never stay the same you either get better you get worse and so we're into getting better and we'll make every effort to do that and that will um, we got a lot of really good players that we've uh, acquired in a in a variety of ways and the more good players you get the tougher decisions you have it's tough to take care of everyone but um, I know a lot of players want to be here I've already had those conversations with people and um, you know, there's a way to get it done and, and, you know, we're going to have to, it's nice that, you know, we're expecting 10, 11 draft choices, you know, with comp picks and such. And so we're going to be healthy there and you, you got to have those guys contribute when you've got as many high priced players as we have. And, and, uh, we're looking forward to that opportunity to get into that process after these guys, he needs a break. Um, you know, my job's just getting going and I'm, I'm already just talking about it, getting excited, but it's, uh, yeah, this is devastating. There's no way around that. And, but you move forward. Following up on, on that, John, you mentioned how hard it is to beat Patrick Mahomes. And I know you don't think a lot about AFC opponents and things like that, but just knowing that the success they have and they could always loom as kind of that you know final boss at the end of this thing, how much do you have to think about what we need to do to get over, get past that team in particular? Yeah, I, I mean, we're constantly evolving in our in our vision. What we, you know, we, we call it wit, what it, what it takes, and you know. Um, they're not just words, they're what we believe in. You know, one of the things we added after 19 was finishers. You know, we need finishers at every area of our team. We've got a lot of those, you know, and it still wasn't quite good enough. And so you, you go back, we'll continue to improve this team. We got, in my mind, I, you know, I know it. I, I couldn't be prouder of Kyle, his leadership uh, with this team. He gives us uh, an advantage every time we take the field, the way he leads his, t his staff, the team. Nobody else I'd rather work with, and and uh, I'm right here for him and and with him. And uh, um, you know, we came in here talking about wanting to compete and win championships. That that hasn't changed. It's only gotten stronger. And I believe we've got the core and nucleus and people to get that done. Um, it's a kick in the gut to uh, to get this close and not get there. Uh, so I hurt for everybody here. And but the only thing I know how to do is pick yourself up. Let it hurt for a while. Use that as fuel and move forward. Last Super Bowl, you had to trade DeForest, which you didn't want to do, but financially it had to be done. Do you envision being able to keep all the major high-priced players this time around? Yeah, there's some challenges, uh, Eric. I, I hope so. I think we're set up to do that. It, it takes uh, putting the whole thing together, and there's also things we have to plan for you know, going forward. So you can't just be reckless. We never will be. Um, it goes back to the draft being so critical because those guys, um, you know, making and contributing to your team are very critical, but it goes back to the whole piece. So it's it's early, you know, we've, we've been obviously looking and planning for these things. Now we get to include Kyle and, and his staff on those talks and, and, and we'll have a, a great plan moving forward. Kyle, um, some of the players after the game said they did not know the rules, the new rules for overtime. And Brock just said that he kind of went to to Brian right at the start of overtime for kind of a refresher of okay, these are the rules, right? It, was it important, do you think, for the players to know 
the the, diff, the new rule as it pertains to overtime in the playoffs? Well, yeah, I mean, we we did say, I and mean, we told everyone as we were waiting for the coin toss, hey, review everyone with them, make sure they're sure before we go out. So we asked the position coaches to do that, but no, I didn't cover it in a meeting on the Super Bowl week. I don't think that changes anything. Um, we did it with our analytics department. We decided that going into the playoffs, what – you know, I think you guys know how I've explained how I make decisions with that stuff in the past. I take all the information I can get, um, especially ones I haven't been in. And um, our analytics felt that was the best way to go. But as you guys know, I don't always just go with that. Uh, I take into account what they say, what they think is right. And then I go off my gut in the heat of battle. And I knew what they felt going into it. And when I think about that during the moments I have to make the decision, I think the type of game it was did match what they felt was the best way to do. It did seem more like a field goal game. Um, and our defense had been out there for a real long time right before that. So uh, it was no, I didn't feel at all to override that at the time. Some other context, I believe we just closed, I think it was 11 play drive that we just closed the game with. And when you're playing Mahomes, you're chasing them a lot, you know? So there's a lot of effort that's expended. I think, you know, the context from there is you, you need some time to get fresh. And so all those things play into it. And, and those, those were sound decisions. That was the decision that was made during the week, well, basically. Yeah, I mean, you always, I mean, analytic decisions are made on a piece of paper. So you can read that and understand math um, and what they think about going off that. But that's why, but I always make it in a heat of battle with that information. And I mean, if it was like the Super Bowl the year before, the one that seemed more like a shootout, I think I might have felt a little bit differently. Um, but having that information going in and the way ours was going, I didn't feel differently. I felt accurate with what they had recommended. How, g g given how the flow of the season went, and a lot of the, the pressure the, the Chiefs generated in the Super Bowl, is your early inkling that one of the priorities this off season will be to, to, to invest in, in pass protection and fortify that part of the team? Um, I mean, you want to invest in wherever you think makes you the best team. And you can sit there and load up on O linemen and draft them three years in a row and go spend on free agents and um, and then not have any people score touchdowns and things like that or rush the quarterback. You can do a lot of that type of stuff. It just depends how it goes. But I in that game, I didn't feel like we were struggling just blocking them. I think we missed a few blitz pickups, which that's what they do. I think that's why they're second in the league at that stuff. Um, that doesn't always come down to a lineman. That comes down to kind of hot throws, things like that. And um, But no, you're going to always try to upgrade at everything. But that's when, when all these discussions that go into it, like trying to upgrade to just beat that team or anything like that. This, when you look at football and the way it works out and the amount of games that you play to, to get in the playoffs and just two or three playoff games to get to the Super Bowl without there being a series to play. Like, you don't, you think of what are your options? What team do you have? How can you get better through the draft? How can you get better through resigning your own players? How can you get better through free agency? And what does that affect years to come? And you look at that every single year and you try to become the best team possible with the situation that you're in. Um, you don't just say, hey, we're upgrading here this year. It's you got to make sure that's available. And if it's not, um, then you get stronger in a different area. There's lots of ways you can win. Um, you just got to keep trying to find that way. Much of this falls on a quarterback to deliver a Super Bowl. So, uh, what did you take away from how Brock uh, handled the Super Bowl and how we handled the aftermath of it? Um, I mean, I thought Brock was unbelievable. I mean, it's you know everyone has plays in a game every single person um, that you want to take back but um, Brock not turning the ball over in that game making a number of plays um, taking us down there um, to take the lead earlier on I mean at the very end of the game to take us down to um, make the take the lead um, I thought you know we, we didn't get it done so none of us all of us obviously could have done another thing but I was real happy with Brock played and real happy with how he played this year and I thought Brock was unbelievable. I mean, one of the most impressive seasons I've been around um, for a football player and a quarterback. And um, he was just a stud through it all. How much can team today and the meetings? No, no one addressed the team today. I mean, we just had, he might have talked to guys after, and I know he spent a lot of time with guys after the game. Um, but, I mean, players voted him as our uh, Eshmon Award. So, I mean, that says what those guys thought about him. And um, real excited about Brock. How, how much improve, room for improvement is there for Brock? Like what, are, what are areas you'd like to see him improve, and how much can having an actual full off season without surgery and all that help him? Um, I mean, I think just Brock, every time, when I say like Brock's a real guy, it's because um, when he does something, he always under, when he makes a mistake or he does something well, he, he always understands why. It's, it never seems just like 
just fortunate. He he processes it very well. The way he approaches practice and games is always the same. And um, so Brock just anything that he struggled with this year when we watch cut ups together, uh, he needs time to correct it. But those are things he'll figure out that he struggled with because we'll be able to put it all on tape and show him and he'll see it right away and uh, he'll get that done throughout OTAs and have a good by training camp. I mean, that's how he was last year mentally. Um, some of the things he would see that he struggled with during the year um, that we couldn't quite correct during the year because Wednesday, Thursday, Friday practices aren't really like that. Um, it's hard to develop some of that muscle memory and things. You're just trying to get through the game plan and get ready for a new defense. Um, but I remember last year when he saw some things and he would just be like, man, now I see it all together. Like, I'll be all right when I come back. And we didn't know because he was hurt. But by the time he got in training camp, he had it solved. He, you do it in your backyard. You figure it out. Like, it's got to click, though, and you got to see it and you got to feel it. And that's what was so cool with going through it with him last year. Four years ago, you guys concluded that you couldn't keep two high-priced defensive tackles on the team at the same time. You could have a scenario where you've got two high-priced wide receivers. Have you? Thought about the kind of long term having two guys, you know, making. Top I think dollar. that was hard. We we could have had two. It's it's there's always give and take, and we were trying to have two. But then when we realized when we two have two high price D tackles, we we're going to have to lose two other players and a draft pick. And so it's like it's balancing and all that out. I mean, you can figure stuff out, but then what's the risk of that? What do you lose? And that's why everything ties together. That's why they've gone through a thousand different scenarios over the last six months, over the last two years, what's two years ahead. But there's no like, hey, you can't do this. You can do that. Like, it's which way do you want to go? And whatever way you want to go, there'll be, that'll be a huge advantage. But also you got to take away from it another spot. And that's how you balance that out. And you don't balance that out till you know all your choices. Well, if we do this, what can you can you go a different way? Is there a player available in free agency that would allow us to do something different? Is there a guy in the draft? Are there a few choices? So if there's one guy there you can't do, like it's all that plays into it. And that's why those are discussions that don't stop until you really got to make those decisions. Uh, I'm sure this isn't a surprise, but people say, well, now it's proven you can't win the big one. Um, but you know, Andy Reid couldn't win the big one, and your dad couldn't win the big one, and there are a lot of coaches that. Or like that. Does having that perspective of history, I mean, family history, help, or do do you even worry about perception? I mean, you'd love to fix perception because I would love to win one for what I know about football and stuff. And I know if I fix perception, that means I did everything I wanted to do, which isn't fix perception. It's win a damn Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> but I also know, like, when you say big games, like we've got to win a bunch of big games to get to Super Bowls. Um, we've won a lot of big games here. Uh, we've won a lot of big games to get into playoffs. Um, the fact that we keep getting there shows you guys how many, how much we've been game, win games or big games, and I think you guys are aware of that. Um, but it's, you know, these two Super Bowls have been tough losing to Kansas City. Um, but to think that if if we win that, that means I can win a big game. No, that means our team won the Super Bowl. Um, that's what that's what I understand. You guys can have any narrative you want, but like the success or the failure, uh, it comes down to one game. And I hope that I can be a part of a team that wins a game at the end of the year. But to say that the Niners can't win a big game would be an extremely inaccurate statement. Thank you. Thank you.